It's Toilet Dunes. It's Toilet Dunes. And now we pause. It's Toilet Dunes. I'm your host, Sarah Morris. Folks come to my big green bathroom somewhere north of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And we sing a little, we talk a bit, we put it out on the internet. Just in time for your Friday afternoon. Of course it's the internet, so you go on and watch it when you choose. But there's a new episode coming out real soon. And that was our pause. I didn't warn you. <laughs> my name is Sarah Morris. I invite people into my big green bathroom. People like Helena, Helena, Hallberg. Tell me which one you prefer. I honestly don't have a preference. How can it's that be? Awful. Well, because I grew up speaking four languages and they it's a different pronunciation in each language. Yeah. So I hear it, you know, hear it all different ways. Okay, well, yeah. I'm going to try to be consistent. I'm going to go with <laughs> Helena. Great. All right. <laughs> We're gonna not sing Helena, though. <laughs> Here, we're gonna sing a little Joni Mitchell. Mm -hmm. All right. One, two, three, four.
Can we do a high five? Yes. That means it worked. Nice. Yes. Oh my gosh. Woo! So beautiful. A little Joni Mitchell. Yes. Um, that song just has so much wisdom in it. Of course, all of her songs do. Yeah. Um, but but that one particularly, as I'm as we were singing, it was just like oh, oh, um, you often play the Mountain Dulcimer. I do. Which, famously, was also played by one Joni Mitchell. So you maybe know like all of her songs. I do. I actually have like a bunch of tutorials about all of her on all of her Dulcimer sure, songs. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people might yell out like versions of Freebird that are more Joni Mitchell, like, KZU! Did they do that to you? Like, no, not I've yet. I've never, never had that happen, actually. Some yeah. sort of uh, Joni. Uh, there's a habit of having beautiful Joni Mitchell tributes in the Twin Cities. Have you ever, yes. does that happen? You live in Nashville right now? I do. Um, does that, do they ever do a Joni Mitchell tribute? I think I saw one not long ago, but you know, I'm still making my way in the, oh. Into the crowns in Nashville, so uh, yeah, yeah. Next time for sure. They were working on a Joni Mitchell musical a few years ago, and I still lived in New York. Cool, but uh, but that got scrapped somehow. Don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. there, there. I, I, that's how I learned Joni Mitchell because I'm very low, late to Joni Mitchell's party, mm. and uh, so I was like popped on one of these tribute shows, and they were like, uh, "You get Ashes Blue," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> oh. Someone else is playing guitar for me on this one. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was me. That's how we did that. All right, let's dial it back a little bit and say you and I met uh, in the middle of Texas last May. Yeah. Yeah. Last May on Schulenburg, Texas. Schulenburg, Texas. Um, on a cow ranch. <laughs> um, and it was a good day. We it was really rainy. We wore um, rain jackets for some That's of that right. day. That's true. That's right. um, but. At the time when we talked, like you mentioned that you have some distant Minnesota relatives, and then not too long after that, you're like, I'm coming to Minnesota. Yeah. You're kind of having a wild, magical Minnesota weekend. I really am. I really am. We're going to show you all of our best Minnesota action. I can't wait. Like and that. the Big Green Bathroom is probably the most Minnesota thing that you could experience. <laughs> uh, but before you got here, tell us quickly um, all the places you've lived, all the, all the things you all the languages you've spoken. Oh boy. boy. Yeah, so my parents are from Sweden. Um, I culturally feel very, very Swedish, um, but I was born in Switzerland, uh, in the German part of Switzerland, and then later I lived in the uh, French part of Switzerland, and then I moved to New York about eight years ago, um, and then I this year I, we moved to Nashville, which has been a change of pace, for sure. Yes. Yep, yep. Have you felt the change of pace? When I moved to Nashville, the change from Minnesota to Tennessee speed was notable. Mm. I can only imagine going from New York that that felt a way. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. And it really, to a point where I like had to internalize that it's like okay to not, because you know, in the city you're just constantly, you're constantly hustling because you have to pay rent. <laughs> yeah. And like obviously you have to pay rent everywhere, but it's expensive as fuck to live in New York. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the change of pace and everyone wants to talk to you all the time. That's another thing that we yes. like. We're like, you know, the neighbors come out and they chat, you know, which is, it was a new experience for me. The first night we were babies when my roommate and I moved down there, but the first night our um, downstairs neighbor came upstairs and was like, hi, I'm blah, what, I don't remember his name. <laughs> I'm a bad neighbor. Have you decided on your church? And we were like, what? <laughs> This is, in Minnesota, we wouldn't, I mean, we probably don't ever talk about that. Right. If we did, it's like the 10th right. to 20th meetup, sir. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Like, but also there's like a beauty in how uh, quick people are to just like be open. Absolutely. So it's yeah. just different. It is different, but yeah. it's wonderful. It's yeah. working out really well. So. Good. Yeah. And you've got a new album coming out uh, next week, actually. Uh, the yes. end of March. I know. Yeah. But it's March 22nd. Oh, that's right. It's so March next next week. week. So next week. Yes. That's right. I'm really good at the time travel in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah clearly. Yep, yep. You so were <laughs> way ahead of me. Yeah. So tell us about it. So this is my debut LP, which means uh, my debut like full record. I've been releasing music for about eight years, but uh, this is my first full full length project. Um, and it's called Epithet, and uh, it's, you know, it's my first time really just digging into an album and really creating something cohesive and 
and uh, there's a lot of themes of like multiculturalism and female empowerment and mental health and th those are the things that I like writing about Those are about big most. themes and they're big themes. We need all the songs about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's coming out. I'm very excited. Uh, we're gonna have a release show uh, in Nashville. Mm. Yep. Where? Um, Can we all come? It's Yes, I, I because we're so early out. I, yeah. yeah, right now I can't I oh. can't quite confirm it yet. But Just by kidding. the time this is out, you'll probably have it in the we'll like, probably have it in the show notes. or That's something. Or whatever. Um, but yeah, so it's really really exciting, and it features multiple songs with the Appalachian Dulcimer. There, it also there's also songs that I wrote on the Appalachian Dulcimer, but we, for the album's sake, decided to make them full band songs. Um, okay. It's a good little mix. And Mary Bray produced it? Mary Co-produced by co -produced Mary Bray, that's right. Recorded at Power Station Studios in New York, uh, which was one of the last things I did before I left New York. So it's like very meaningful on multiple levels, which is awesome. And it's kind of a dream team. I read a little bit. I mean, like you worked with as many women as possible in as many roles as possible. Yeah. And uh, you were part of, when you were in New York, you were part of a Berkeley, a year-long... Master's program. Master's program mm -hmm. in production. In production and songwriting and production. So yeah. I've, since then, I've been working increasingly as a producer as well, which has been a lot of fun. Um, I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's been been a good time. And yeah, the the, I it was kind of inadvertent, but but uh, but there's a lot of women involved in this project, and uh, you know we we were an all female creative team on both the recording side of the music of the album, but also the music videos. Um, I got to work with some incredible creatives and uh yeah it was uh, it was a good time it's there's been some a really nice process beautiful videos so i will That's link funny. to as many of those as possible i love to like uh intersperse them sometimes i'll intersperse them in the show it doesn't mean i want you to leave the show and go watch it now but you can come back to it later and watch it That's what <laughs> i'm saying because you should stay with us for the rest of the episode all right when you come to the big green bathroom i have some questions are you ready for this I'm ready. all right okay. helena the first question is Will you? Tell me something good. Uh oh. Tell me, tell me, tell me something good in the world. Big, little, anything. I'd say, because I'm coming off, uh, right now I'm coming off this uh, conference called Folk Alliance. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a folk music conference. And uh, I just love, I'm just, I like feel the community within my heart still. Mm -hmm. And it always takes a while for that to like dissipate. But so right now I'm really, really appreciative for the, the music community and yeah. for people like you and the fact that we, that I got to come here and, yeah. and, and it's really nice in this, in, in the spirit of music and musicianship. So I love that. That's the good thing. I love that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I think... I, I feel my experience as a musician is that other mus musicians are very, like, let's do a thing together. Yeah. This is our, this is our thing. Let's yeah. all be together. Not so competitive. Just yeah. more like, let's be... Let's be a big wide net. Yeah, especially in folk and singer-songwriter, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. When you were at Folk Alliance, did you drink a fair amount of coffee? I did. And lots of espresso martinis, you know? Because oh, <laughs> you can get the alcohol the and coffee. coffee. <laughs> well, I have to ask. I had to ask that because Twilight is a sponsor. Ooh. Our sponsor is Winnow MN. They are a coffee subscription service. Very cool. Where once a month you get a bag or two or three of freshly roasted beans from a different roaster in Minnesota delivered to your door. That sounds amazing. I know. So they're like this go-between between dreamers. And people who need their dreams fueled. This is how I've decided. This month we're still drinking Spy House uh, coffee. It's their Moonstruck blend. And Spy House, it's, the Moonstruck blend is part of their gender equity program. So they are very intentional about working with women producers, paying them a fair wage, and getting you delicious coffee while, you're, while they're doing it. That's so cool. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, so... That's so why I had to ask you that trick question. But also because I've been to Folk Alliance and I know that the hours are wild and you can drink coffee at any time and espresso martin martinis at any time. That could <laughs> yeah. be a breakfast too, for sure. It's all it's all of those things. Uh, <laughs> the next question that I like to ask is, where are you learning right now? In terms of where... 
You can take that however you however want. However I want. But like sometimes, you know, it could be physically, is there a place you're learning? Or it could be in your heart, or it could be like in a book, or it could be, you know, in the clouds or in Journey Mitchell or wherever. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say I think I'm learning in nature right now. Mm, because, say more. Yeah. Because, I mean, we talk, we've talk. we talked about the forest floor concept. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm very much enjoying, now that I've moved out of the city, nature mm -hmm. is like much more accessible. And I grew up around a lot of nature. Growing up in Switzerland means that you're like at the foothills of the Alps. So well, I've heard Heidi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but so we've been, you know, really, and that's been part of this like slowing down from yeah. New York to Nashville is like we've been really appreciating the nature that we get to experience just like around our house now and, and the birds especially, like we're learning all the names and the calls of the birds and things like that. So um, so that's what I'm learning currently and I'm de it's going to make its way into my music for sure. Yeah. Have you been to Percy Warner yet? No. Park? In no Nashville. No, no Percy Warner. No. Percy Warner. So it's in Belmead area. Oh, okay. Belmead kind of dead ends in this gorgeous. I don't know. It's like acres and acres. Nice. I mean, my husband and I used to spend Sundays like hiking for miles. Yeah. It's beautiful, and uh, also once we were on a hike and Taylor Swift walked by us. We'd seen nobody for hours, and then we saw Taylor Swift. So cool. That's not why you should go. You should go because <laughs> it, because it really does feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, but you're right there. Yeah. Nice. Um, Radnor. Lake awesome. was the other place we really liked. Right, right, right over Lake. And, yes. Yeah. Have you found any Nashville outdoor spots that are special? I just love the nature reserve, like Shelby Bottoms. Yeah. You know, we're in East, and, and that's kind of the, the closest place, and there's so many birds, and there's so many deer, and it's just it's just wonderful. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's very good. Um, so where are you learning is the right now of it, but the next question is the all the time of it. What's the steady beat for you, something you can continually come back to that's restorative or supportive or nourishing or just you can rely on it like a steady beat um for me that's been increasingly has been the Appalachian dulcimer like yeah. it's a, it's great it has a you know it's such a unique instrument and it's so deeply in, in it's you know comes from the American folk tradition but which I do not I come from more of a European folk tradition background and to me meeting in the middle and being able to meld those things is like a perfect uh, representation of who I am, I think, as a person a little bit. So that's definitely something. So I, I just spent the morning transcribing like Swedish uh, little small folk tunes for the dulcimer that I'll cool. be teaching this weekend. Or, yeah. Yeah. In, in the weekend that happened. <laughs> yeah, the weekend that happened. Time is... I mean, what is time? What is time? Yeah. No, so I, I think uh, I think the, the dulcimer really grounds me, and also the dulcimer community is a big, big part of that, too. That's awesome. How did you, so how did you meet the dulcimer, and then how did you connect with the dulcimer community? Is that mostly an online, like a robust online situation, or was there an in-person version in New York? Um, so the way I found the dulcimer, I mean, the, the, the way I became aware of the dulcimer is, is, uh, Joni Mitchell, yeah. <laughs> hands down. Yeah. But then, uh, but then I, uh, we were on tour a few years ago, um, and, uh, we were driving by, I, re I didn't have a dulcimer, like, cause there, you can't just buy them anywhere. Right. Kind of. They're not a guitar center? No. Dulcimer no. center? <laughs> dulcimer <laughs> center? Yeah. <laughs> something to work towards um but so i the way i first got my first one was that we were going we were driving through appalachia by, on our way back to the, new york and uh i i was like this is my chance to get an appalachian dulcimer and uh so there was a workshop that was like 20 minutes off off our route and uh i looked at the dulcimers and they were so beautiful and i called and it turns out that the main luthier had died the day before Whoa, from lung cancer, hadn't told anyone. But so his apprentice, we got like a really nice connection and he, he was clearly like processing his grief. Yeah. So we, I got to learn about um, Mac McKinney. He's a very known in the Dulcimer community who, who passed. So his, his apprentice was, was telling me all about, you know, their workshop that they had had. Um, and so he was like, well, you can't come by, but I'll sell you one of the four last dulcimers Mac McKinney made. Holy hell. So that was my first, very first dulcimer, uh, Henrietta. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then um, the community is, the community is, there's actually surprisingly a bunch of dulcimer work, um, festivals online so there's something okay. called quarantine dulcimer fest i'm not sponsored by them or anything i'm literally just saying this because yes. they're awesome <laughs> um so there's quarantine dulcimer fest there are a lot of online opportunities cool. um but you know the in-person is really 
is really where it's at. I, is there one in Nashville? Is there an in-person dulcimer community? Are you going to start it? There is a little bit of one, yeah. um, but we, we do have a good Facebook group, cool. a dulcimer you know, yeah. community, so, uh, so there's a lot of interacting online for sure. I'm asking lots of nosy dulcimer questions just in case yeah. somebody's out there and they yeah. want to know all the things. Mm -hmm. we got to tell them. Yeah, and there's a Facebook group called Everything Dulcimer. That's a very great place to start. Everything's coming up, Dawson. Yeah. <laughs> that's, um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. The last official question is, Helena, will you take us by the ear and spin us out with something you're listening that's inspiring you right now? I like to say something that's getting your ears all hot. Mm. What are you listening to? Well, um, ooh. I, I actually, on the way here, I was listening to Yeba. Which she's a she's more of like an R and B pop singer. Cool. She came up. Uh, I think she got signed with Ed Sheeran as a songwriter sure. originally, and and uh, she's just has she has an incredible range, vocal range, and the way she you know navigates her voice is really really cool. Mm. Um, so that's something I was listening to, which yeah. is a little I don't oh, always listen to folk, but um, it's clearly <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, so that's something I really love. I that's love, awesome. Yeah, she I will released link to that. an album not not long ago called Dawn, I think. Okay, right. mm -hmm. I will listen to that, yeah. or I will link to it below, so that when you're done listening to Epithet, which comes out next week, but I know there are singles available already, like Surprisingly Disco, and tell me the other ones. Uh, first one was From the Outside, mm -hmm. and the third one was Epithet, which is the same name as the. Yeah. So you can listen to those three singles now. You can pre-order mm -hmm. the album, mm -hmm. and then you can listen to yeah, that. That's that sounds like a good playlist. And then maybe Alicia Keys, because I recently got to interview you for about that song, and you talked about Superwoman being huge, influential. Yeah, I I actually I love that. you asking me that question made me realize that the first song I like actually wrote and recorded and released was heavily influenced by Alicia Keys. Yeah, so those R and B singers, you know, they're or you know, it's just good. A good singer is a good singer. Have you read her memoir? No, I have not. I, she, I read it, and I like was. I'm not a huge Alicia Keys fan. Yeah. I loved it. It was like very delightful. It was yeah. very cool, and oh, wow. I just came away with an extra sense of like, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I bet it would make a good audiobook because she probably sings to you some of it. Yeah. Uh, did you bring stickers? I did. Can you show I have us a few stickers? Can... Not the Kansas City stickers. These are from Folk Alliance. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I have a whole merch. Uh, you have a beautiful bag, website, actually. so I'm gonna like send people there. But... <laughs> nice. And I have stickers, and I actually have uh, these pins that are uh, literally an exact replica of my dulcimer, uh, which are like these little gold pins. And then I have lots of stickers. I have actually this. So this is the. This is the, the this is my dulcimer. This is literally what my dulcimer looks like. Yeah. And there's the sticker form and there's the pin form. And then I have these that are fairly recent that are my my current favorites, um, which say folk means people. Oh, and it does mean people. Yeah. So if you go to the website, you can order these things. You can pre-order the album. You can watch all the videos. You can just pretty much become the super fan that you um, <laughs> that you're meant to be. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you so much for squeezing me in on your visit to Minnesota. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to thank sponsors again, Wino. If you use, I didn't say this before, but if you use code Stay Toilet Tuned, you get five dollars off your first bag. Five dollars off. It's like really a great deal, and the coffee's good. Um, and then the other sponsor that we have is, um, it's kind of an in-kind sponsorship with the Wyoming area. Community Arts Council, WCAC. They, that's right, Wyoming, Minnesota. It's 45 minutes north. It's this beautiful building. There used to be a church. It's half an uh, art gallery. And they're always rotating from local artists and putting on these beautiful shows. And then there's also a performance space. And once a month, they do the performance space. You like this? It's called the Hallberg Center for the Arts. So they named it after you, what? which is amazing. What? So you, next time you come, I'll, you can <laughs> squeeze yeah. that into your journey as well. The fourth Thursday of every month, they have a songwriter in the round. And the next one is March 28th. So it's next Thursday. And it's going to be Molly Brandt. She's amazing. She mm -hmm. sat right there. And Dan Rumsey, he's amazing. And it's going to be me. And you know me. You already know me. We're already friends. So, uh, thanks to Wyoming Area Council of, nope, Community Arts Council. I've been getting it wrong because there's a lot, but it's Wakak. <laughs> Wakak!
Thank you, Akak. Thank you, Winnow. Thank you always, always, always to my Sarah subscribers over on Patreon. I love you so much. We got some new friends that joined, and there's some hearts right here that are ready for your name if you want to be a part of the persons who make toilet tunes and other wild things I do possible. Until next Friday, which is when Helena's album comes out, but also when there's another episode of Toilet Tunes. I'm going to ask you to stay toilet tuned.